Hello and welcome to episode 34 of the worst reselling podcast ever. We're stuck with that name because we haven't decided which we're going to call it. So, uh, Are you sure Aussie it's 34? Are... Wasn't 34 last week? No, I thought it was 34. We'll go with 35. <laughs> Give I me two 35. seconds. Oh, and, you, and plus, I'm in the wrong spot, so, you know. Oh. Oh, this is where we can have nice things. Is it 35? Oh, you're right. It is 35. No, nobody cares. <laughs> what episode? Everyone, <laughs> everyone cares. That's right, we'll start again. We'll start again. Yeah. Episode 35, and welcome back to the reselling. Well, we never know. We are anymore. Oh, all right. Give me two seconds. I'm going to start it again. <laughs> so, hello to the members no, that watch this beforehand. It. Yeah, leave it. No, I'll, I'll just start it. again. I'll just start again. No, I'm just no, going to do it for here. I'll just cut it out. Yeah, so, oh. all right. So, welcome to, <laughs> hello and welcome to episode 35 of the worst reselling podcast ever. This is not the sixth <laughs> time we're trying to do an intro part. <laughs> but, um, so, hello and welcome. You may have realized that this is only probably a 15 to 20 minute uh, video today. So, basically what we're doing is we're actually splitting the podcast into four segments. Uh, so, if it's a course of an hour, so we basically as close as we can to get to 15 minutes and they'll be released uh, each day over the course of four days. Uh, so, Monday, oh, sorry, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we'll have the 15 minute parts you know, released on those days. And on Saturday, the full episode will be made available. So if you want to watch the full episode, watch it on Saturday. Or if alternatively, if you're a member of the channel, you'll get it straight as this afternoon when we upload it. Uh, so that's a little bit of uh, housekeeping and confusing the hell out of everyone. You had the perfect <laughs> opportunity there to, you know, pull some crap there and say, well, we had nothing to talk about this week. So it's oh, only right. be 10 minutes long. I was about to say, we have lots of things to talk about this week, but we can't talk about that because we've been sworn to secrecy. You know, we, can't, yeah. we can't be upsetting the Apple card again. Um, no. But, yeah, so I, I suppose, you know, get straight into it because we're, <laughs> we're timing ourselves on the 15-minute segments now. Uh, what we're talking about this week is actually uh, resellers dropping like flies. So a lot of full-time resellers reverting back to going back to work and all these different things, myself included. So um, what I do want to stipulate right at the start of the episode before we get into it is that there's no shame going back to work don't be the last yeah don't be the person holding the bag once everyone else is you know like when the the whole thing's falling apart so if if financial reasons or yeah other reasons you need to get back to work uh do that there's no there's no shame in that so um yeah but anyway that's that's a bit done we'll, my we'll beloved say, first gold's gone I've i know I, you know there's a few people he's selling on part time but he's gone off his youtube that i still have to watch <laughs> <laughs> Hi, i'm sure he'll be you know i was going to say you'll still be lurking around no doubt but i was going to ask you how you are Leah, but i can see you're quite distraught still <laughs> yes distressed about josh <laughs> dying mm -hmm. but apart yeah, from well, that I'm, I'm very well thank you well, it's good. Well, I suppose now that Josh Galt's gone, I think Harry Tornado is the only the only Josh left full time. Yeah, we lost yes. a lot of Josh last year, and uh, mm -hmm. Josh Galt, and I don't know. There's a few other Joshes running around, but you know, we'll we'll see if they're important enough to to pop up in the comment section. You below. Yeah. What's right? What about you, Blake? What have you been up to? Ah, uh, not a lot. I did a hell of a lot of listening yesterday, so I'm pretty tired today. I had a big sleep, and now I'm even more tired. So I need to not sleep. Um, <laughs> But apart from that, I'm very good, yes. Very well, it's well. good. I, I, I do have a question before we uh, move on to talk a little bit about the topic. What the hell is that thing next to you? It looks like a, a jacket that's been starched too much and sitting <laughs> yeah. up by itself. Yeah. I, uh, I, it's I have it's on the back of an office chair. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, is that your bad bow eye or is that just something that's hanging there? No, no, it's it's a – I think it's a – yeah, it's, I couldn't tell if it was a jacket or a rug, but I think it's a rug. I'm actually not sure it's not mine if you can't tell. I actually thought it was. Um, I might be a throw rug. Yes, I, I, still I thought, I thought, I it, was your, I thought it was your photography <laughs> station wrapped up to you. The truth. So maybe <laughs> put, it, put it in the comment section below what you thought it was when you first seen it, <laughs> because mm. I literally jacket or uh, throw rug was probably the last thing I was thinking of. I thought it was a cup giant ice that. cream. Could have been, been a giant <laughs> ice cream. Yeah, I yeah. wish. Um, well, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's right. So I, I suppose we're going to get onto the topic. Um, Yes, yeah, so a lot of resellers have been, you know, not, I suppose not a lot, but a lot of prominent resellers have gone back to work. You know, uh, like Leanne mentioned, Josh Galt, uh, Archie Biscuit, but uh, Hustling Hooks that, you know, Blake mentioned went probably back a little bit last year as well. And I think, mm. you know, well, I, I've got reasons to think what I believe it is. But what about you, Leanne? What, what's your thoughts on the matter? Oh, I just think, you know, the opportunity, when opportunities arise, if, you know, reselling's not doing, you're not getting out of it right this minute, what 
you need and an opportunity does arise for people because a lot of us that are in the reselling community have other skills and we're quite skilled we're quite we're very intelligent people and we have skills in other you know businesses and stuff and like a lot of the ones i talk to i constantly get you know ah, oh, like when they tell me what they actually do in their daytime jobs or if they used to do a daytime job and are now full-time there are some really highly skilled people in the community and you know who knows they get offered a job for really good money you have to seriously think about well what's going to be best for my family or you know in say in blake's position they're just having bought a house as a young couple you know what's what would be best for them if an opportunity arose for, him, arose for him? You know, there's all different reasons why people might do it. I don't think it's – I never think it's because they've failed as such. I think it's no. to do with taking the opportunities when you can. And I've said – I said to you guys the other week, like if I was younger, a lot more like both of your ages, um, I would – and that opportunity arose for me, yeah, I'd still be doing reselling as a, you know, side hustle because I think it's the best hard hustle you can do. But, yeah, to have that full-time income as well as that side hustle would be brilliant. And what about you, Blake? What's your thoughts on the matter? Oh, I much? think it's just that <laughs> much, not many thoughts go through this head. Um, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> sort of thinking that it's just the thing that they've decided, you know, within themselves or their family as well. Like you say, like an um, opportunity arises, but it's also the fact that they've sort of sat back, had a real good look and realised, okay, this isn't providing what it needs to provide for me to be able to, you know, live the life that I want to live. So I think it's pretty simple overall and they've got the opportunity to go back and, um, you know, make what they want to of themselves, or whether it's they got their dream job like Adine did for um, Hustle and Hooks or whatever or, you know, it's just different circumstances with family and stuff, more like Josh mm. Gold. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah, everyone's got their own reasons, but I think that it's just, you know, if it if it's not what's best for them, then they're not gonna not gonna do it, and mm. yeah, yeah. It, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and I, I agree with both of you. Is that I think, you know, what I'm finding in a lot of the conversations that I have, you know, through the comment section, <laughs> I had a lot of comments yesterday, um, and also, yeah, you know, <laughs> speaking with Instagram and all these different people, is that they don't, you know, a lot of a lot of resellers, you know, I won't include myself into this bundle because I was selling before, is that they came in during COVID times where you literally could pick up a rock and sell it for obscene amounts of money because there was that many much money was being thrown around. Um, that's all dried up. You know, the state of the economy, you know, the cost of living price, pressures and all these different going around is that, you know, resellers, unless you're in a niche that you're selling necessities, you're always selling those um, those items that are shiny and, you know, it's suited to people that actually want to, you know, use those things. Um so people don't have the disposable income to buy your video games or your four hundred dollar Funko Pops and all these different things. So, you, and what Blake was saying and Leanne as well is that you, you really need to do what's right for your family at that point of time. Is that you know being a full time reseller, especially in Australia, that you know, you might be only making you know thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year depending on your sales. Because you know, if you're selling two hundred thousand dollars a year, that that's 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 sales. That's not actually translated to profit. So you might only. Mm -hmm be on a 25% profit margin. So you, you, you're working your butt off for 25% of what you're actually bringing in. So you've got 50,000. Mm. 50, that's before you do tax and all these different things. So like realistically, I could get a job. And, you know, the one that I've you know, signed a contract for the next 12 months, they're paying over $120,000 for, for a year, right? So I do, you know, a, probably about eight hours a day, come home, do my eBay stuff, yeah, which I quite enjoy. And I'm still doing that from that perspective, doing some YouTube stuff, which I quite enjoy. So it's it's no longer that pressure to, you know, go to the thrift stores or go to Facebook Marketplace or source overseas and, you know, constantly being, you know, on the back of my mind, yeah. looking looking and looking and looking and all these different things. And, yeah, like it's a, to put it bluntly, it's a great pressure off my off my tentacles. <laughs> and I also wonder, like, how many of the, how many of the resellers that that are that have been around the last couple of years actually mm. um, became resellers because during COVID times they actually their businesses were closed down, or where they worked closed down, and they actually lost their jobs. And a lot of people came into reselling in that way, as opposed to you know making a, de a decision to, oh, I'm going to start doing reselling, they actually mm. had lost their jobs and were looking at a way, well, what can I do during this time? Well, and became right. online resellers. So, yeah. Because when, when did you start, Blake? I know when Leanne started, but when, when did you really sell, start from a reselling perspective? 
So I started, like, actually started just before COVID. So sort of late 2018, early 2019. And then I stopped all the way through COVID. <laughs> and then the <laughs> COVID ended and I started again. So, um, yeah. but I started real sort of properly, like seriously sort of start of, what was, start of 2022 probably. Oh, so that's the time of, I did. Mm, yeah, so like, I mean, you've been doing it before, but yeah. Overall, I've done probably a three and a half, nearly four years worth of it. But pretty much that whole best time to be doing it is when I didn't do mm. it because I had a full on job that required pretty much all of my attention. Yeah. At time, so, so. yeah and, and that's what it comes down to is that I, I've seen a lot of, I suppose, I won't say insignificant people, but a lot of people that, you know, breeze in and out of the community they might post on instagram occasionally say hey look this is what i found in the thrift store and all these different things they've all shut up shops like yeah i've seen a lot of people that i spoke to on numerous occasions that have gone back to full-time employment and they're just falling off the radar for the simple fact is that not they don't have a youtube presence or they don't have really a, a big social media presence so i think this i won't say it's an issue but i think this thing is a lot more widespread than what it is is because yeah. mm. maybe for every one person on youtube that does it or one octopus on youtube that does it maybe there's 50 or 60 other people that are actually behind the scenes that are to yeah. doing the same thing and they just don't publicize it as much but yeah I, I suppose i agree with what leanne is is that it's not a failure it, it's what your circumstances no. need and you know i would rather you know swallow my pride go back to to work full time than you know turn destitute or you know, be homeless all those different things yeah. just to appease you know imaginary friends on the internet because you, you know, you're trying to get karma points or something along the lines of this yeah. but, mm. and i think it's very telling of a person that brings attention to that and you know kind of uses that to publicize to say hey look this is you know this is a failure of this person if they had followed this person's model or if they had done it this perspective yeah they would have succeeded it's not the way it is and like we've said numerous times that every person's individual you know stance or individual um you know individualistic <laughs> way of doing things <laughs> is completely completely different which is obviously what individualistic means but hey <laughs> what it is. Oh, we got that out. well it's but, good that when yeah. you can get provide a definition when you make up your own new words well, well, no, that's exactly <laughs> right. I, was, I was just trying to work it out but yeah so basically I, i'm actually in the process of doing you know two reaction <laughs> videos at the moment because yeah i can't get enough of you know punishing myself but curious <laughs> Curious Collections released a video the other day where they kind of backed onto the to the Josh Galt train leaving and all these different things, but they didn't really they, they mentioned it in passing. So the episode wasn't you know like jumping on the bandwagon like every other reseller will be doing in the next fortnight. Um, but they'll they'll basically saying you know a lot of people are realizing now that you're not reselling is not all Lambos and mansions and all these mm. different things like where you know twelve months ago it was all camp ah oh, sorry. Um, Amazon courses, you know, if you did an Amazon course and you sold on Amazon, you'd get like Rolexes and all these different things. Money be showering from the skies. So there is that bit of realisation that reselling is a lot of hard work. And I and I don't care what people say or otherwise. Like, you know, <laughs> you know if, you, if you're watching a particular YouTuber and, you know, it's all rainbows and smiles and all these different things. That rainbows and unicorns. That's right. They're only showing you what they, they want you to see because, like, deep down, mm. either they have no idea and they're probably going to fail in the next six months or that they're doing it for the views. So you just need to be very mindful from that perspective. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Oh. And, yeah, for any, for people that are wondering too, like say with Josh Galt, for example, when he finished all his videos have disappeared off his YouTube channel so he can't watch his old content, which is very mm. sad. But there was a reason for that. So the industry that he works in, um, he has to sign like NDAs and not have a public um, social media presence because – you know, that's part of his contract. So that's why, and I would imagine that once he finishes that contract, that it'll all come back and, yeah, if, if that's what he chooses to do, so. Mm. Yeah, and that, that's right. But I, I suppose that once we will do a, a first little segment because the people have spoken, you know, we, they want grumpy, gr uh, grinding grumpy gears. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> you, say <laughs> you say it. I can't think. It's too hot here in the Octolayer today. <laughs> grinding granny's gears. That's right. So grinding Granny's mm. gears. There we go. I spat it out the, the, for the nineteenth time. Uh, so basically, we'll roll into that now. So uh, we will talk a little bit more about that. But look, Granny, what's been annoying you this week? Well, this week, what's annoying me is a couple of the YouTube channels that I do follow, reselling ones. I've actually stopped watching them, and there are a couple of popular ones um, in particular. That's where all my views are gone. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, look, uh, Hayfro sells is probably the one that really comes to mind right because 
it's so negative. Every video has this really negative connotation. And I just thought, I got to a point and I thought, I don't want negativity. I want positivity and I want something that's going to, you know, help me get through my day, not bag out, you know, like, okay. So as an example, so these are the, some titles, right, the last few videos he's done. So we've got um, eBay just keeps taking from sellers. Um, then we've got the previous one is leadership resigns, uh, viewer theory on how eBay is manipulating sellers. Then the previous one to that was eBay's algorithm is a slow learner and not your friend. Then the previous one to that is um, tired of eBay's traffic mani manipulation games. I mean, look, there's all, yeah, exactly, exactly. There's some things in those titles that are relevant topics in the sense that we know that mm. some of that stuff's happening, but I kind of feel like we, need to, we know it's happening, it keeps on happening. We kind of need to get over it a little bit and pull up our big girl pants and our big boy pants and, yeah, like have a bit of positivity uh, in our lives instead of always, you know, banging on. And we can't blame eBay for everything. I mean, I know there are days. Like today is a dead traffic me. day. <laughs> yeah, today is a dead tra traffic day on eBay. A really good day yesterday. I had a really good day on de eBay and Depop yesterday. Today is dead as a doornail. But that's what happens. I've known that pretty much since I started. Like, that part of it's never changed. You're up and you're down. Yep, you're down. We're going to have yeah. another reseller coming after us now. No, I was about to say. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I, 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 I no, love Hey Fro. So, Hey Fro, no, say hello. I, I, yeah, look, I actually have been enjoying his content, but it's been really dark and heavy of late. And I mean, yeah. there's, he's not the only one. So, then you've got, um, so even Dark Thrifter, like a lot of just his. Call it out all, all the resellers. <laughs> yeah, uh, so negative. I'm just saying, like, how about some happy, nice content? It doesn't, I mean, surely there's some good stuff. If you're still reselling. Get the views. Well, yeah, but does it? But then, uh, how many people are like me that are feeling like, oh, no, I don't want anything more negative today? Like, because well, if you're it. feeling Leave a bit down started. yourself, <laughs> well, if I wanted to watch something dark, I'll watch a bloody true prod true crime podcast and watch a better serial killer. But I'm just mm. saying, um, you know, sometimes we, when you're feeling a bit low and a flat, a bit flat when you're reselling, you want a bit of a lift and you want a bit of happy content. Yeah, and, and I, I like think to know that, that everyone is. else is suffering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah, you know, I, I suppose that's another section we could throw into the comment section down below. And yeah, you know, we're going to end the first part here. And don't worry, I'll cut this bit out for the full episode. But um, if you do, how, how do you, what's your viewing preferences? Yeah, you know, do you like the dark uh, underbelly of eBay or do you prefer, you know, up and bright videos of people in warehouses doing ASMR videos? Um, you know, or, you know, going thrifting <laughs> for ASMR videos. Yeah, which are, you can also find on my channel. So by all mm. means, check them out so I can get some, you know, some of that sweet, sweet YouTube re uh, <laughs> revenue. But, um, yeah, and I, I kind of agree, Leanne, is that, you know, but I, I suppose, you know, what, what's your stance, Blake? I, I mine is kind of that if you... If you're known for that, you got to kind of stay within that lane. Yeah, there's sort of like two camps, really. There's the positive people that go thrifting and give, like, advice and stuff, and then there's the, I guess, the eBay news kind of people that are the more dark and dingy. So I think there's two different audiences altogether. Like, there's that group that want to go, oh, woe is me, eBay is the worst thing in the world, it's going to be the death of me sort of thing. And then there's that other group of people that are just like, oh, I don't really care, I'm going to do this anyway kind of thing, and... Uh, they enjoy watching that stuff, which I'm in that camp. I actually enjoy people watching people find better stuff than me because I don't find much good stuff. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. my preference. I don't but like do you the also dark and think, because there's always that risk, like, that you can get a bit lost in some of that dark stuff because you're when they're saying things like, oh, the traffic's down or whatever, and then you start digging into your traffic. I mean, you can go down a big rabbit hole that wastes so oh, much you time doing all that stuff. And I kind of th feel that that might be a little bit, you know, it could be a bit damaging well, to people's psyche. I, I think that's where the whole eBay reset thing in the originally came from anyway was that mm. whole something wrong with eBay, so I'm going to do something drastic to fix it sort of thing. And yeah. like, oh, I fell into that. We all we all did. Yeah. But we, we all more, did. Not fell into it, but we gave it a go, I think, is more. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And, and I think, I, I suppose it really naturally aligns with what personality you have, right? If you're a pessimistic person, you probably would enjoy those hay fro videos and, you know, primo chemo videos and all those different things. Love both of those guys. You know, please don't come after me. <laughs> I love people chasing me at the moment. Um, but but the, the fact of the matter is, is that I, I suppose from my perspective and the way that I like running my business is analytical, right? So I kind of tend to look at that pessimistic point of view, like curious, curious, uh, curious, curious, uh, curious collections. Jeez, I'll get that out in a second. Is the, yeah, they were talking about, you know, like the US is bringing an increase of 10 cents to the, um, yeah. the processing fee. So it's gone from 30 cents, 40 cents. So that's, that's US. It's not, we, we pay 30 cents Australian. So we're probably paying about close to 15 to 20 cents US, so they're yeah you know, they're actually paying double the processing fee that we're mm. paying at the moment, mm. um, you know and you know like the um, I want to say will but I'm not too sure of that we're, we're going with will but he, he said that you know someone in the comment section said well, that extra ten cents is that I'm done I'm done with eBay I'm I'm moving away from reselling it's because that that that's costing them you know x amount of sales and you know mm. if you've got two thousand sales a year or if, like they said they've got five thousand sales a year so that's an extra five hundred dollars that ebay is taking away for providing no extra service right so mm. this is what I, I suppose i look from an analytical point of view what people might say it's pessimistic but you know like and there's nothing wrong with like those videos where they're happy and go thrifting and yeah you know, i suppose the rally roots and the hairy tornado videos and all those different things so I, I tend to steer away from those videos unless i know those people personally like you know brad and jazz and i'll watch those just out of obligation no i'm joking <laughs> <laughs> but but the thing is that they're more, uh, they're more relevant for us anyway well, because it's well that's right but but I, I suppose that like those are the videos i don't necessarily enjoy where you know watching what other people pick up because the likelihood like you know where the skyline is right i like presenting those ones because they're out there that you know to go to brad's latest video is that with the um the formula one jackets the likelihood of us going out <laughs> finding those identical <laughs> formula jackets is yeah. nothing right so but on the yeah. flip side is that yeah, like with the Skylanders, I suppose that, you know, that, that you could come across it. Yeah, because I've come I across it numerous times. Yeah, they had to bring I know, it I love it, I love it, I love yeah. it. Well, I, I enjoy that kind of stuff, like you say, like the jackets mm. and stuff, because it's sort of stuff that I don't find, so it's almost like I'm going on an adventure myself. But, well, like, I was just thinking then when you were talking about the fees and stuff, about that five grand or whatever, it's a lot extra and stuff. But mm. I was sort of thinking about that's something that eBay's done, but you got different people. So you got, like, you got like Hayfro, which is more doom and gloomy about it, but you got people yeah. like one that I can think about that's analytical, but also in a more positive light is J Ride Flips. Yeah. He's one that does that, and he's like, you know, with returns or whatever, you know, eBay siding with buyers mm. and stuff. Don't let that, you know, thirty, forty, fifty dollars, or in that case, five thousand, with the extra fees, stop you from making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm. And that kind of thing. Like that's the sort of camp where I'm sort of leaning into. Yeah, and, um, and I suppose as well. Yeah, and. Well, I, I agree with what you're coming from because that's I'm I don't fall into one category or the other, right? So I, I suppose I would, yeah, I always like yeah. I, I suppose I reference the um, the auction professor because he's like he's the happy middle, right? Like because he will have a swipe mm. at eBay, but then on the flip side, he'll show you stuff that he's found and you know, yeah, like quite of that. And I quite enjoy yeah. those videos because it's got both sides. Like I don't necessarily, <clears throat> I still watch you know Hayfro. What's his first name? Jeff, not Jeff. Jeff. Yep. Jeff, Jeff, it is Jeff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I watch Jeff, you know, like, because, yeah, like I said, I quite enjoy his content. I've spoken to him numerous times and, yeah, quite a lot, you know, I quite like him as a person. Um, but, yeah, I suppose if I was a brand new eBay or something along like that, I probably wouldn't, you know, go down that path. For the same thing that Leanne was saying is that it's very depressing and doesn't shine in a very good light. But mm -hmm. I suppose, you know, to be brutally honest, yeah, that's how business is. Like, business isn't always you know, rainbows and laughing and having a good time, you need to really prepare yourself for the bad mm -hmm. times. And they kind of, from my perspective, it, it kind of gives you that um, resilience that, you know, that something will happen. And, you know, like going back to what Jay Ryan Flips was saying, and, and that's a perfect example of what I, I was trying to get to next, Blake, is that eBay's a roller coaster. There's not like, yeah, I don't care what people say. There's no likelihood of you saying, all right, I'm going to wake up today and I'm going to make $500 profit. Yeah, you know, eBay doesn't yeah. do that. Like no. yesterday, I had, what did I say? I had a $1,400 day yesterday, but apparently I'm on $0. Yeah, <laughs> across exactly. those stores. Yeah. But yeah. And the, the thing is, though, that, but, you know, like going back to that J Ride Flips mentality, and this is not taking it away from anyone in particular, is that, and what Curious Collection said, what we, Will was saying is that's $500 out of his. Yeah, you know, out of his pocket a year. So that's they brought in mm -hmm. five uh, fifty thousand dollars US last year, and that brought their yeah you know, their annual income down by one percent. So all the cost of living prices and all these different things is that 
yeah, yes, you can do that. But what's the likelihood of someone that just started eBay making hundreds of thousands of dollars on eBay, like J-Roy Flips? J-Roy yeah. Flips, you know, is the exception to the rule. And that's what I want to bring attention to people is that, you know, just because you want to go full, you know, full time and do all these different things and, you know, follow your favorite YouTuber or your favorite octopus into full time employment on eBay mm -hmm. is that, you know, what you're looking at is the exception to the rule. But, you know, a lot of these yeah. people work, you know, 60, 70 hours a week is that myself included. You know, I was working from, you know, 5 a.m. to, you know, possibly 9, 11 p.m. at night, um, you know, just to get stuff. And then there's no guarantee of return on investment. So, yeah, you know, you're doing 12, 12, 13 hours a day. There's there's no guarantee that you're going to make any sales that day yeah. because it mm -hmm. really depends on the products you're getting. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, like, like I said, that, like, yeah. and I, I don't I – don't, like, I, I suppose I look from a realistic point of view is that I'm not selling a product to anyone. I'm not selling you know, a dream or I'm not selling a story. Um, it's just a case that these are the analytical things that you need to be on top of, like you know, your finances, yeah. your, your stock and all these different things because, you know, like J-Roy Flips, I, I, I enjoy, enjoy watching his videos and I enjoy talking to him when we're on to see, um, you know, Shane's Soda City Flips channel when we pop onto mm. that. Um, but the things he finds at the thrift store mightn't necessarily be replicated across the board. I went out yesterday I and I found yeah. one thing. <laughs> yeah. I think it's more the mentality of it, I yeah. think, is the biggest thing with that whole thing. Like whether it's, you know, don't let, you know, that $50 then stop you from making hundreds of dollars, I guess. Then. Well, that's like, right. Because yeah. it's easy I to throw your hands up in the air. Mm. Like I did that the other day. I got like a $90 return. And at, for like five minutes, I was like, ah, worst thing in the world. And yeah. then I'm, you know, I made that money back up and I was like, that's oh, not a big of a deal. Like, yeah, mm. I can make, yeah. make well, it back. So the, me the mentality is a good thing. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's where I'm coming from. Like, I, I've I'm a, been a big fan of watching Jeff on Jeff Sells and his stuff. And I, and as you guys know, I love getting into the figures <laughs> and delving deep into all that sort of stuff. And that's fine. I, I guess where I'm coming from is that rather than saying, coming up with, um, you know, this is the problem and then this is how to get around it or this is mm. what you could do to fix it. Just of late, it just seems to have gotten, like, more negative and more negative and more negative. And, like, you know, I will go back to watching his stuff, but I'm just having a little bit of a break right now because I just was finding a little bit too negative. And yeah. I think it's Josh Gold, for example, He's he was always very analytical and into the figures and stuff like that, and I loved it and mm. got right into it. But then, you know, on the... On the flip side of that, he was had other things that he was quite positive about, and I think that's where the thing is not to get too negative. Mm. And I think it's a reflection of the mental health of the person as well. And I might reach out to Jeff after mm. this to, just to check base because, like I said before, yeah. I, I'm pretty big on mental health. And you know, like, and I noticed even Josh Gold. You know, I hope he doesn't mention, mind me saying this: is that if you go back to his earlier episodes, and you can't <laughs> because he's wiped them off his channel. Um, but yeah. if you go back to the eBay Power Hour, hello Jeff, uh, John, and Josh, Josh. I'm going great with the names today. Mm. Maybe I'll have to You're cool down. I know. I'm having, <laughs> You're too I'm excited. Trying, I was about to say, I'm, I'm finally over. You know, Calamari 19. I'm feeling. <laughs> yeah, a lot better. I can't even get the words out. But yeah, if you go back to the earlier episodes, Josh is really vibrant and happy, and he's bouncing off the walls. He's almost like got to you know drink red cordial mm. with a dose of ADHD. But if you go progress through the episodes, you can see his demeanor changing. He's becoming more yeah depressed. I don't want to go use depression because yeah, depression is quite a big word to use. But you can see a downturn in his in his demeanor and all these different things. So. That's something you need to look out for. And, you know, by all means that if you know someone that, you know, it's a reselling space and, you know, like we said before, it's quite a lonely adventure, you know, and we mm. do this because, you know, we all enjoy it. You know, we, I enjoy Granny's company and that's it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> don't, no, be, I enjoy, like, don't be mean to Blake. Oh, well, well, I might as well live up to my reputation. But the thing is, yeah, I quite enjoy Blake and Granny's, yeah, and I enjoy everyone that I speak to, um, yeah, their, their company. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, if you're doing it yourself and all these different things, and yet you are noticing that someone's having a bit of a downturn or, or, you know, feeling a bit flat, reach out to them. Just have a, yeah. ask them how they're going and all these different things. Because, you know, like Hayfro, yeah, you know, if you go back to his earlier videos, he's always been on the edge of, you know, I suppose, <laughs> pessimistic. Yeah. Like, you know, if you watch his pretty Yeah, 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 but there was... Yeah. But he's getting very dark now. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It might be a case. I might reach out to him and see how he's going. And hopefully he's going well. It just might be just a, a mood yeah. he's going through. And, now, mm. reflection. It's, and I mean, look, I'm, I'm, this is a bit of a plug for my Discord um, at the same time. But There's uh, a weekly plug. We're not, we're, 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 we're not up for the plugs yet. Well, Jeez. Look, one of, the, one of the great things about it that I've discovered, and it's really come to – it's really sort of come to fore in the last week or so, is mm. the community that it's built. Like, 
where people are actually becoming friends because they're getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. And it's not just that they're posting text messages. You're actually getting to talk to people just like we are talking now. Yeah. So you actually can go into one of the chat rooms and actually talk to people, whether you have your camera on or off, doesn't matter. Um, of course, I just did my makeup this morning, so I did, you know, like <laughs> put the camera on. But, mm -hmm. you know, you go in there, you're meeting people and getting to chat to people. And, you know, some of the people that have been coming in regularly into those chat rooms have been saying, Saying that that how great this is because they actually get they're actually becoming more productive because they're having that interaction with other people that they weren't getting before and I think that having a community when you're in an industry like we are is hmm. so important you need to have some whether it's in a discord like grumpy granny's discord is a great thing um but whether it's in a community. discord or whether it's um through Instagram chat or whether it's through messenger chat, some sort of interaction with other people that understand what you're doing, it's it's really good, really good for That's you. That's right. Yeah. And and yeah, and not yeah, obviously I quite enjoy Grumpy Grinny's chat um, Discord as well. So by all means, yeah, join that. <laughs> Just I've got another person to harass. But there's also other platforms. So you know, if you're not a big fan of us, you know, if you don't like our kind mm. of content and all these different things, and you stumbled across this by accident because you know, like Got head for bid that you know, <laughs> bloody uh, YouTube's punched out to you. But there's other there's other Discord channels you can you know yeah. that probably suit everyone's niche. Yeah, there's people that have you know a certain perspective on different things. You know, uh, Granny's got a different one. You know, I've got a different one. Blake's got a different one. So yeah, really yeah. finding the community that resonates with you. Like there's no yeah. correct answer, and, and there's no to me anyway. There should be no reason to be you know not a attached to all the communities if you can you know if yeah. the communities you know if they if they align with your you know principles and they align with your you know ethics and all those different things by all means join more than one you know that you don't have to you mm. don't join sides and this is what infuriates me in the, in the reselling space it's almost like little <laughs> little factions running around with spears and throwing things at people <laughs> um yeah but yeah but like i said a big advocate well, you know Mental health is, and mental health and your own well-being, you know, financially, yeah. you need to look at it from a Maslow's perspective, right? So you need to have all these little things in place to be happy, you know. So hmm. do what, you know, look after yourself, you know, mental health-wise and financially and don't get involved with anyone else if that doesn't affect, if that affects you from that perspective. Yeah. But by all means, if you see someone's feeling a bit flat, reach out to them and ask them how they are. But yes. anyway, getting on to our next topic, Blake, yeah. what's your... <laughs> what's your first 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, oh, we're going to move on to your... Um, you, you well, you needed a week. topic that was going to run, didn't you? And I provided well, that's it. Right. So, <laughs> well, that's exactly right. <laughs> We're off the bandwagon now. But what, show, us your, show us your crap, Blake. What's your, what's your crap for this week? Well, I can't show you anything because oh. I didn't pull it out he's, or whatever. And he's fa he's failed the, the one of it. Like, well, it's going to be something from a few weeks ago, which is long gone. Um, <laughs> I was in an op shop and I got excited because I saw a big row of Ralph Lauren button-up shirts, which I love to sell. So mm. I just went through and I checked the first one or two and I was like, yep, all good. Grabbed the rest of them. And then I came home and like three of them I bought. I had a complete big rip under the armpit halfway down to the torso, which I bought. So that's my crap is just something that I bought. So, I spent like $25 worth. Mm. So what did you do, end up doing with them? Question. Put them in a bag, get rid of them. Throw them out. No. <laughs> I'd usually <laughs> I'd usually do that. That's what I would usually do, but I don't want some other poor person to go do the same thing that I did. So, yeah. so th that's, this uh, is going back to that yeah. this is going back to that optimistic point of view. You have to be pessimistic. Yeah, you know, screw the other person over. <laughs> <laughs> I should have. Don't worry, I've got plenty of other crap I need to donate. So <laughs> it's, uh, all right. So I'll before before Granny gets on her tie rise, I'll, I'll start with my uh yeah, my show us your crap. So basically, oh, this is my crap. crap of the week. Yeah, it's a Lego set, right? Like I know before I have mentioned that I sold Lego previously. Uh, I've seen this on Facebook Marketplace for fifty dollars. It's the Doctor Who set. So, a little background about story about this one is that Lego um, brings out like uh, user created stuff. So you can actually, yeah, provide a um, a template to Lego, and Lego could potentially make your your product, right? So someone's submitted like a Doctor Who idea and then they've basically publicized that you know they've made a lego set out of that idea right mm. so basically the, the basis of that is that the person that submitted that idea will get like two percent of sales one percent of sales for the product mm. that life so long story short this set will probably go for about 
150 bucks or 200 dollars right. pre-owned depending on the, depending on the thing why you know like you, a lot of people would be like oh this is fantastic it's 100 you know you're 50 bucks i bought it on facebook marketplace it's all complete there's no issues there but the fact of the matter is what becomes why i don't like it and why it's you know show us your crap for it for this week is that i have to build the bloody thing and i hate yeah, building lego <laughs> i hate building lego for me to get maximum dollar yeah you know, like if i put it on yeah ebay now i'd probably only get like 80 bucks for it because there's yeah. no guarantee me showing you um, or if I would literally open myself up to an, an iNAD because, you know, if there's one piece missing, you know, heaven forbid, you know, they're chasing me with pitchforks and torches. But, mm. you know, I have to build the bloody thing, which is going to take me about four or five hours because, you know, the tentacles are quite <laughs> – they've got each, you know, each got a brain of themselves, so it's quite hard from that perspective. But, well, I think you, you know, should you should be, um, you know, conning your uh, little minions in and you yeah. should pay <clears> them to build it. But then I'm out of pocket even more. So realistically, yeah, like I said, I'd rather just get the whip out. But the, the fact of the matter is that look for things, and I've said this numerous times, is look for things that are easy to photograph, easy to process, and all those different things. I just looked at it from a Lego perspective thinking, hey, I could quadruple my money you know, or triple my money after fees. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. But then I didn't think all the way through is think, hang on, I've got to build this bloody thing, take photos of it, you know, mm -hmm. confirm that all the parts are there, all these different things. And yeah, and it's going to probably sit in my death pile now. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to well, build it. and I seem to remember Octo when we were in the daily refinement group with, and we mm. listened to Tekken Sports a few times. I seem to mm. remember one of the big things he used to say Please frequently don't him was, <laughs> "Yeah, well, he used to always say, don't buy projects.'" That's right. Did he not? Yeah. And what did you do? You bought a project. Well, that's right. Well, like I said, that yeah, you know, it's because I've got an affinity to Lego, right? Because I used to sell a lot of bit of Lego, and don't necessarily. Yeah, I wouldn't really endorse it at the moment because it's quite flooded and Lego, it's kind of like the Funko at the moment. Like, yeah, they're bringing out the same set over and over and over again. So you, you kind of let, need to let Lego mature before you sell it kind of thing, unless it's, you know, high demand, it's out of stock, you know, a little bit of retail arbitrage. But, yeah, but like I was saying, is that that one now is that you're like exactly right. Like, it's a project, you know, like what, mm. what Tech was saying is that, I, I just got, you know, blinded by the dollar signs, which a lot of people do. Like, mm. yeah, with Blake with these Ralph Lauren shirts that they go around the thrift store. Mm. And I had the same thing that, you know, I, I did specify it was supposed to be in the last week, Blake, but thank you for, you know, dragging it on for Well, it could have been. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when it was. I lose track but, of the days. Because I was going to say, mm. I was going to bring up a, a G-Star shirt that I picked up and I was going to give it to Blake, but I should give it to Blake. I threw it in the bin. But, yeah, when I went and I ironed the bloody thing, so I washed it and I ironed it for presentation to take some photos of, and guess what I found? I found this massive gash in its arm. Mm. Like, I didn't even pick it up, like, you know, like Blake was saying. And that's $7 down the drain. And go back to what, mm. you know, what Blake was saying earlier is that, you know, you're not throwing money away. You know, $7 is not going to break the bank, right? But that was the, pretty much the best thing I found that day. Yeah. <laughs> so that, yeah. they're kind of negating. Well, I do have a whole big box next to me of crap that I bought in the last week, but I've already been on a big tangent about that in the yeah. last week. Well, 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 like jump in the box. Jump in the box. Hurry up. Jump in the box. Jump in the box. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Like, there you go. You, have you managed bits of crap now? Well, the question is now: Have you managed to organise to return it? <laughs> I got an email back about five days ago, um, but no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Three, yeah. oh no, nothing. Um, so yeah, I don't know that that's going to happen. I think it's going to get weaselled oh. out of, but eh, it's fine. Right. It's not, so it's not fine. I'll probably well, push it. But. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. So you that, did yeah. you buy that through eBay itself or directly? No, from no, 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 directly through. Directly. Okay. That's a so, mm. yeah. I'll find a way good. to do it. Don't you worry. I'll keep you updated. Mm. But um, I was about to say because yeah, yeah, that's that's a reflection of that person's business. And yeah, I suppose yeah. Leanne, we'll get to your your show us your crap. <laughs> oh, you want to do mine now? Oh, yeah, well, oh, I forgot what the segment's called. What's it called again? Well, yeah, I know. Look, <laughs> show us a crap. We'll just call it that. I yeah. found, I found this lovely children's book, mm. Glim the Glim the Glorious, or how the I little folk I had that book. the Gub Goblins by Gay Middleton. Lovely book. And this book actually came when I checked it in the store. Um, it came for about $60, right? Now, kids' books, this was actually a bit expensive for me. I paid $2 for this one, so, you know, which I normally don't pay that much for a picture book, but it looks really nice. I opened it up. It's got no writing on the inside. We're, we're banished her because she's obviously paying $2 for <laughs> a kid's book. <so. laughs> I mean, I better move it back. Tiny, tiny little inscription. 
Oh, but it's all nice and clean and everything. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. I thought, oh, good, you know. So I bought it home. Did the inscription so, so you normally rip the page out like I do? Or is that what you do? No, heavens forbid, no. <laughs> you don't do that. Well, that and, in a while. Yeah, well, hang on, I'll just take the cover off because it'll just make it easier for me to show you. Um, yeah, like the pages are really quite clean and, you know, when I first opened it up. So then I went to take photos of it, didn't I? So I went a little bit further into the book. I just find a good page where you'll be able to see it better. This is why I and don't I find it. To no- well, I started <laughs> to notice this. I don't know. Really, can you see the brown stuff? No, we can't. You'll have to explain it. Oh, foxing, is it? Can you see that uh, little brown spot up the top? Slightly, yeah. Up here, there's a little dark. Is it mold or anyway, something? Um, well, no, that would have been all right if it had been mud. Um, mold. Just, it is indeed mold. Ah, so I was right. <laughs> Yeah, hang on. Uh, so there, it's see? Riveting oh, viewing. Can you see for that? Our pod, for our audio <laughs> podcast viewers, um, and, yeah, Leanne's yeah. showing us a, a copy of her book. <laughs> yeah. So, like, well, the thing being that with books, anything like this, if this had have been, even though the pages have got a little bit of um, sort of a Ripping. waiver because they've had a bit of water damage, if it had have been mud, I could have cleaned it off. I can clean off dust. I can clean off most other things. And uh, but I can't get I can't sell a book with mold on it because you can't get rid of it and it's just going to keep growing and it's not healthy. So yeah, pissed off. Yeah, get like the oh. mold remover you use for your shower and just <laughs> yeah, pour that on the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'd go well. Get a bit of bleach. Yeah. Get a bleach yeah. 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 Maybe Chuck, maybe just photocopy the book. Can you? Can and you like if it had been a book that come for about twenty bucks, it wouldn't. I wouldn't have felt so. You know, it wouldn't have worried me as much. But I thought, oh. You know, we, what a how much though? did it come for? About sixty dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. So mm. you know, bit of it, and it's such a nice book. Like, and the the um, illustrations yeah. in it are so nice. It just yeah, yeah. It was a bit of a. Will you still sell it? Can you still sell it with that? No. Yeah, I would. No, the one. No, the one thing that's the my one thing. I will sell books with foxing, with discoloration. You know, that's normal for me that smell. you get. Um, I've sold pongy books before. I have a way to get rid of the pong now, but I do. I have sold get rid of the old people books. first. Yeah, you just make a note to say they sell smell a bit dusky, or Soak obviously the tough. owner previous owner was a smoker. You know, da, 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 da. some people will still buy some of those books because they're mm. especially if they're rare. The rarity. But mm. the one thing I won't sell is a book with mold in it. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure yeah. heat. Heat and fire and stuff gets rid of mold. Just set it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Try that. That might work. Hey, hey who, yeah. who said we're not, we're not providing um, yeah. <laughs> solutions to the yeah. problems we cause? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my but, one probably worst thing I could find in a book. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm actually surprised by that. Yeah, I would have just wouldn't have paid attention. But I, I suppose you need to go through the books because I've been caught out before myself, like, yeah, going through books and, you know, um, like my last day of my video, I picked up a Witcher book, which I got really excited by because it was an, op- mm. an om- omnibus. I can't really pronounce it. Omnibus. All the books are together. Yeah, omnibus. Omnibus. Um, omnibus. Yeah, so basically it was one of those. I got really excited because it was only like a dollar or something like this. And when I flicked it around, it was all this water damage on the back. It was just completely soaked. It was like someone left half the book in the water. And I was kind of thinking to myself, well, why are you even trying to sell this at a thrift store? Like, mm. it, it's clearly, you know, not fit for purpose because, I, 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 you know, I got halfway through it, then all the pages were stuck together. Yeah. Like, no. for, for water, for yeah. water damage, Blake, no, like, thank don't go that way, but <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Sometimes with those, depending on what the paper makeup is, but if it's a um, like a coarser, a you know, paper that's in a paperback, hmm. it, often you can't separate it. But if they're a bit glossy, sometimes you can put like oh, a, is... a letter opener or something in and like ease it apart. But yeah, not with no. Yeah. This, this, this one had like more of a glossy page because it was more of a graphic novel, but um. Yeah. Yeah, it was just you know completely cactus. Yeah, you, know, you would have got like I said halfway through the book and you wouldn't have been able to read past yeah. that because you'd just be ripping the words off yeah, the right. pages off the page. Yeah. So it was really bad. But yeah, yeah but like yeah, and that's that's right. But, but yeah, well, I suppose that's our crap of the week. By all means, yeah, if you do have crap of the week, <laughs> please submit it to us and let us know what you want to do. Is that because yeah, there's a lot, short video of your crap, you and your crap. Tell us what it is, what you paid mm. for it, what you're going to do with it, can you fix it, mm. and, yeah, we'll put it in, we'll insert it now. Yeah. now we'll I'll, I'll use it as mine. I'll use it as mine. <laughs> I, don't, I don't buy crap. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, it just looked like it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But 
But look, I, I suppose that, yeah, and also a photo will do, yeah, just by all means, yeah, flick a photo in and, you know, just a little bit of backstory about it and I, and I can you know, fill the back behind it. But I think what it comes down to is that we all make mistakes. Like, I really yeah. don't care who you are or who you think you are and all these different things. You, uh, with the exception of Blake, because, you know, Blake's got yeah, pretty bad I'm perfect. That's probably a <laughs> but, yeah, but the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, you're still going to make mistakes and you might as well just laugh at it. As long as you're not, <laughs> not spending $200 on something that, that you, you're yeah. going to lose. Um what was it, Judd's video yesterday? I think he brought out a video that um, I'm pretty sure he was referencing the the FIFA shirt that he found. Like it was an EA Sports one. Um, I've been burnt by that before. Is yeah, you think, oh, Jesus is a soccer jersey. It looks like it's really flash. Y- yeah, I-, I paid ten dollars for it and I sold it for five with plus post. So yeah, I lost money on yeah. that shirt. And yeah, yeah Judd by the scenes of it's done the same issue because yeah, yeah you get caught up and. And yeah, like you're only human. Like regardless, you know, if you've got mm. like one subscriber or you, yeah, you got one follower on Instagram, or you're just starting out. Yeah, you know, when you're starting out, you will make more mistakes than <laughs> the most, yeah. or hopefully more than us. But um, it's just so. I, part I, I think I said on the live stream, didn't I, last week about like say jump knit jumpers, for example. Like mm. last year, I picked up lots of, and if I find them in the, I look at the tag generally first, and if the merino wool or pure new wool, oh, I think I'll. Oh, great you know and mm. op shops are inherently dark like deliberately so you can't see the problems with the clothes but you know you hold it up and you try to see if there's any holes or anything in it looks really good you bring it home and you think great i've got this you know great jumper and it's not until you you do all the prep to it and then you hang it up mm. to photograph it and then it looks still looks good until the minute you hold that camera or the phone mm-hmm. up and you actually look at it through the phone and you go oh shit there's a hole. yep Yep, yep. It's so hard to see with knit stuff. Yep. I've had that a few times as well. But oh, beauty, mm. awesome, great. This is fantastic. And then, nah. Yep. Uh, if you don't, yep. I've sourced a few um, knit stuff like on Depop to bring back here as well. And they hadn't picked up on it. Their photos were crap. It's part of the reason it didn't sell. And then I'd hang it up myself in my setup, and straight away you're just like, ah. <laughs> yeah. But and it's funny, like, isn't it? Because you can look at it as many, even when you're prepping mm. it, often you don't see it. Yep. But it's not, and it's not until you hang it up, and it's not until you look at it through the lens that you mm-hmm. actually do notice it. Yeah. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. Got the neighbours' kids going off. I'm going to scream at them in a minute. So if I go mute, <laughs> you know why? I'm to stick my head over the fence and start screaming at the little kids next door. But, uh, but yeah, no. But like the thing I you do miss, to stick like, your head know, out the window with your oh, octopus head, and yeah, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't, be the, it wouldn't be the first time. I'll stick my head over the fence. And go, but the, the, mm-hmm. the fact of the matter is, it's like, yeah, I suppose if you are a new reseller and you are looking at clothing, because yeah, you know, apparently that's the entry way to reselling these days. Um, you know, grab the shirt, look under the armpits, look at the the bottom tag so lift the bottom of the shirt up look at it make sure it doesn't yep. tag because the amount of fake nike fake um you know ralph Lauren, polo all these shirts oh, that are finding is the, the, the quite easiest way to tell is that it doesn't have that bottom tag on the inside um and if it does if it looks sus like yeah if it says made in china that's all it is it's not a real shirt like especially if it's nike because nike will have like four or five tags stuck together with different things um mm. So just make sure that obviously check under the arms because, you know, people ripping arms, people like their back as well, like, yeah, ripping. I don't know why people donate these clothes. Obviously, it's Blake because he chucks them in a bag to get his savers coupon. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but they're just like ludicrous. And that's something you need to look out for. And same as pants, yeah. you know, jeans, for example, look for, between the crutch, you know. You know, like there shouldn't be an extra hole <laughs> under the fly kind of thing. So maybe if you're doing that, it's not for someone's tentacle. So uh, just be mindful of that. But yeah. I, I, I suppose I want to loop back around to what we're supposed to be talking this week. <laughs> Full time. Yeah, people oh, oh time. we're going to talk about that, are we? Yeah, yeah well, okay. that's right. We, we, we might blend it in. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> discuss we it. We about the topic. Yeah. I was at the same. Was, we were always, you know, give reseller clickbait <laughs> podcasts a, a mm. month for their money. Um, but I, I suppose that part of the reason why I left – um, you know, full-time reselling is that I'm, I'm finding lately there's a, a like I don't know if it's a realization that resellers are, are a middleman, and I'm pretty sure someone has said that previously. Um, well, I suppose for every business to flourish is that you need to value add to the yeah to the transaction. You can't just go to the op shop and then walk out and sell it to someone for five dollars. I know you probably see that on TikTok and you see all these different things on YouTube shorts and stuff like that. That's not how the real world works. Like, yeah, value adding might be bringing the clothes home, washing them, pressing them, ironing them, whatever you do, presenting them, making them look better. And yeah, what we spoke about before is yeah, you've got a, a wider audience on eBay and you've got a wider audience on yeah. Instagram if you sell through that that platform. Um, but what I'm finding, especially where I am in the Bermuda Triangle, is that people, yeah, I, I suppose that 
they're, they're trying to make resellers redundant in the sense of their pricing because they, they're becoming very price heavy. Uh, like no different to op shops, right? So basically, you know, I normally at the moment I'm trying to source video games like Switch games, DS games, all these different things. Um, people are you know charging eBay prices and they're like they're mm-hmm. like listed in accordance with eBay. Um, no offers and stuff along lines of this. And the, the same stuff's still there six weeks later, you know, all these different yeah. things and where I finally go back and hit them up for, you know, for the thing. It, but the fact of the matter is is that they're commanding these eBay prices, but they don't realise that there's all these different attributes to what, you know, obviously we've got returns, we've got, you know, fees, we've got taxes and all these different things. And they're not they're not grasping that thing. So that, that what the transactions are not happening from that perspective. And I'm finding, you know, me personally is that it's becoming a lot and you know, a, a lot more competitive in that perspective, not so much from other resellers, but from sellers um, you know, wanting okay. you know, We've lost you. Oh. Uh, I'll, I'll show you back. <laughs> I was going to say, re, yeah, sellers, yeah, sellers, yeah, the the, the people that you're, you're sourcing from, uh, are wanting mm. top dollar for your product for their product, but yeah. they're not. They're not. Yeah, it's and, and most of the time it doesn't even quantify that because you know, like you know, that they might be selling Wii games, and you go look at the Wii games, and their discs are so scratched that that they're not repairable in any capacity. Mm. Um, yeah, so there's just that mindset and yeah a lot of other things are becoming more expensive as well like as you know before i was importing a lot of majority of my stock from overseas uh the postage is becoming quite pressing on that so yeah i have to increase my prices and with yeah people's exposable income uh or sorry disposable income drying up it's becoming more more harder to sell those products so yeah because they're not people aren't spending as much money on um frivolous things i suppose like you know Mm. things unnecessary things you know but i think at the same time as all that's happening is the prices are going up on the on the other side you've got buyers actually wanting to pay you less like that's right. i had an offer the other day on a pair of jeans and it was for 12 dollars, including post yeah mm. like, hello hello are you serious yeah. because if i was like i do get a discount from australia post but you know it's not i'm on band four so it's not the highest one now as an example, this person was actually in rural, would have been a rural address for me to post to. So it yep. actually would have cost me $10.07 More. to post it. Mm. I was only charging nine, like my sort mm. of rate normally if I charge is nine ninety nine for shipping. So yeah. I uncharge what I actually pay. But they, yeah, they wanted to, to they, their offer was for $12, including post. That, that's right. And like, I, I suppose that. The, the, they don't they don't care like and this is what yeah. I, I suppose from my perspective as well is that ebay doesn't care so yeah i don't care like yeah going back to it being a pessimistic and all those different things what we we're talking about earlier is that you know you've almost got everything working against you and, and you yeah, know the episode that i'm currently still filming don't worry it's still coming out the yeah that ebay seller in australia that yeah, got banned that. Um, better be good yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it's good it's yeah. good I'm doing, the ed- I'm doing some flashy editing put it that way that's what's taking Ooh. me so long um but the fact of the matter is is that yeah, I'll, I'll give it a little. I think I've given this punch away a long a way before. Is that he's saying he's going to go move to Shopify? Yeah, that's mm. not going to work. You know, you need to really establish your business. You know, and you almost have to have like multiple streams of income coming through, especially as a full time mm. seller. Like, yeah, if you are primarily relying only on eBay um, to fund your adventures, yeah, for full time reselling, you're in a world of hurt. Like, I, I can't yeah. stress it enough. Is that you know, like, you know. People getting up at you know ten o'clock and doing a couple of hours of work and pottering around. I'll go pick the kids up and all these different things. You're not going to survive on eBay, and I, I, like, mm. I, I challenge anyone that tells you otherwise. You know, um, because you're living in a fantasy world, or someone else is living in a fantasy world. Because, um, <laughs> and, and that's not like, not to be derogatory to people. Like, don't worry, I'm not bullying you or anything along the lines of that. I just want to be realistic. Like, you know, I don't mm. care if it's not quantifiable with data or there's no accountability behind it. But the, ma- the fact of the matter is, is that you need to be, you need to be looking at it from a very analytical point of view is that do you have the stock coming in? Do you have a availability like eBay? You almost like, like I'm saying, if you've got an eBay store, that's you know, up and running and you know, it's in good stand. Um, you all, you know, create a Shopify account when you get to that point where you've actually got two streams of income coming through. So, you know, if eBay or yeah, Depop or something along the lines of that, you just can't rely on the one platform. Is because yeah. um, what we were speaking about last week or the week before is with drop shipping. Um, so I'm a, I'm, I've, I know I made it quite clear that I paid for a course to teach me how to drop ship, and it was just basically, you know, follow the numbers kind of thing, you know, like realistically, 
it, it was quite watered down and you know quite stupid but i, I paid about yeah. 300 dollars us or 250 us i can't remember what it was but anyway but they, that like i said before it made me lots of money so i'm not disputing that but the fact of the matter is is that i'm still a member of that group and in the last three days i've seen about 18 people saying that their ebay accounts been suspended and this is a permanent suspension so yep. you need to be very mindful especially if you're looking at going full time and this mm. is what, quite possibly why people are going back to you know to you know nine to five jobs per se is because ebay is a lot harder and they're, they're quite stringent mm. they're, they're moving more and more towards the amazon model where, where you screw up once you're gone and a permanent it's harder than people think that's right. A permanent suspension on eBay is permanent. Look at daily refinement. And I haven't been watching these videos for the last couple of months. So, yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to. Hope, hopefully, yeah. I'm, not, I'm still right in this sense is that he got suspended over probably close to two years ago now. And yeah. he's still not on eBay, to my knowledge. That, mm, yeah, yeah, and he, you know, and, he's probably and, one of the biggest yeah. eBay spokesmen. Yeah, well, out of any, anyone that you would have thought would have been able to get their account back, he should have been able to get his account back on just if you based it on the fact that he was always promoting eBay as a place to be a reseller and how to, and, like, he was never negative about it. Um, and, yeah, a That's lot right. of his his sort of other business is centred around the fact of teaching people how to be a reseller on eBay. And, yeah, it's interesting that, even though he was promoting eBay so much that they still weren't giving him his account back. So, you hmm. know, it just goes and to show. I, I actually like that about eBay. They're not playing favourites at all. If you mess hmm. up and you're not a good seller, well, he was a great seller. It's not because of that that he got banned. But, like, with a lot of people, like, whether it is limiting traffic or whatever it is, like, if you're not a good seller, they're going to – you're, yeah. you're, you're going to get basically put in the doghouse, um, hmm. which I actually do like that because it, it does make it better for those sellers who do the right thing yeah um, yeah yeah and, and you're like right, us. Right. yeah well that's right well I, I don't know about you two but i can you know cross my three hearts and i do have 100 percent feedback no neutrals at the moment which is you know <laughs> i think yeah. tentacles crossed that i keep it that way but like, Me too. I, I suppose it, to talk up I'm a little bit, going to fall off in a month or two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to talk up a little bit, this video that I'm releasing is that this seller, yeah, and I don't know from Barris, so if I don't follow his channel, is just by virtue I found it by accident. Is that and it's going to sound like I'm bullying him, but he was grossly incompetent, right? Like I cannot specify, mm -hmm. to, yeah, I cannot exaggerate to the fact of how incompetent this person was. That everything that went wrong was eBay's fault or someone else's fault, or yeah, all these different things. So. Yeah, I think because when I started, what you gave me the link, and when I started watching mm. it, I think I was just over two minutes in watching it when I messaged you back and said, "Oh my god, this guy!" You know, yeah. like, yeah. Just I never well, watched it. it. You have to send it to no. me again. <laughs> no, it, 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 this this gentleman. Yeah, had you like should. A it's level, worthwhile. It's good watch. Uh, the the level of and I I am sick of looking at him because I've had to re-record my reaction <laughs> six times because I. I have a little spot in the bottom right that basically uh, YouTube puts in there, which blocked me out the first three times before I realised. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that the level of arrogance of this guy gives, yeah, you know, gives me my, a run for my money <laughs> because, yeah. um, but like, a, like, because um, everything from disregarding eBay in itself because it's a shit platform and I think it's shit, so therefore it's shit. Um, quote. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know inventory not doing inventory checks because you're obviously using the product in as well as selling it uh cancelling mm. yeah seven out of 30 but apparently that was ebay's fault like why, well, why, right. shouldn't, everything, why shouldn't he everything. have had inventory available for sale that he was using himself why that's should right. that have been an issue well that's right because you know his stance was that you know everyone's getting their money back so so be it what's the issue yeah. Um, but the the problem is like eBay and you know it survives on good customer experiences, right? So yeah. that potentially that seven out of thirty people that he cancelled transactions on is they're not going to come back, yeah, because yeah. they're like, well, I tr I've been looking for this specific part. Um, it's out of stock. The seller told me too bad, so sad. Here's your money back. Go away. Yeah. Uh, and I can tell you now because he, you know, like I mentioned earlier, he wants to move to Shopify. But if he follows that <laughs> the trajectory across the yeah. Shopify, he's going to be the same shit fight. But yeah. um, the fact of the matter is that, yeah, I suppose that being a full term reseller is that you need a lot of customer service. I think not enough people talk about customer service is that, yeah, if you don't have no customer service, like this gentleman, <laughs> you're not <laughs> going to go far. Is that, yeah, you probably need to do something behind the scenes. And, and Blake's, yeah, gampering, jumping at the bits yeah. to say something. But I, I think what it is, is <laughs> and I, I think what it is, is that, yeah, you need to have multiple sources of income. And what Granny's, you know, looping it back to, you know, the, the start of the episode or the start of part one, you know, all those different things, is that 
depending on your age, you know, like for example, for myself, you know, I've recently turned 89. Um, I can go back to, I can still do employment. Like, you know, the amount of times that I was finished eBay per se at, at you know, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I've, I've said numerous times and Blake said it as well is that there's still other things you can do. You know, you still got, yeah. you, you, you can utilize those hours for doing something else. And, and now oh, obviously I work eight for four, so I'm writing off seven to five, but I can still wake up at five o'clock in the morning and, you know, do a couple of hours after, after work and all these different things just to make that extra source of income because mm. like, and I can be more choosy or more picky what I actually yeah. source. I'm not actually sourcing out of necessity because I'm like, crap, I need to go yeah. grab all this stuff and make $3 profit on it because I'm not going to, you know, be able to, you know, feed my family or, or something along like this. So these are the different things you need to be. What were you saying, Blake, before I cut you off? We are going to say, like, forgotten. we, no, I haven't. Oh, I haven't. <laughs> oh, doesn't okay. have much to say. Stop <laughs> I just intentionally didn't listen to a Stop word you said mean. so that I can <laughs> what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't stop it. Sort of back to the customer service thing. It doesn't take much to lose a person off the platform. Like I shopped pretty much exclusively online on eBay for years and years until about two or three years ago. And like I'm a seller on eBay. I know the protections that buyers have, all that kind of thing. Mm. But I had one really bad experience. And since then I go to Amazon or I go somewhere else. I don't mm. shop on eBay apart from like my um you know, certain gear that I need for the reselling, like my satchels or something from Australia Post or just something like that I'll buy or my, um, yeah, just in general. Labels. But apart from necessary stuff, I will go elsewhere if it's something mm. for that. And I'm a seller on eBay. You yeah, know, this is yeah, my yeah. full-time job and they've still lost me mostly as a customer. Yeah. Not, you know, even though I know that all sellers are different and stuff just because I guess I hold, hold myself to a certain standard and I hold eBay to a certain standard and, you know, that wasn't mm. upheld, so I guess I yeah. I ran, and I'm a seller. So what I'm trying to say is that it, you know, it'll take a lot less for other people to run away than it did for yeah. me. Yeah. So and, uh, and uh, I'll yeah. agree with you there because my bad experience is with the car part that I bought, and whilst I do still buy some stuff on eBay, like I'm well, I'm not a big online shopper anyway, but I have been doing a little bit of shopping on eBay. But I, if I had to go and buy another car part. I think I would rather drive two hours to get to a auto wreckers and go and buy the piece in person and deal with someone in person rather than deal with what I had to deal with with that mm. experience. And there's so, videos on that on my channel if you want uh, to watch it. I was going to say, please watch that video because it's phenomenal. But getting back to what Granny was saying is that, yeah, and I've said this numerous times, and don't do what I do because I, you know, I don't practice what I preach. <laughs> Create a separate account for buying yes. things on eBay. Oh, and what yeah, Granny I've got one too. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't. I, I use <laughs> I use my account, which is like <laughs> stupid, stupid in itself. I haven't yet, but matter. I need need to because well, the, the stuff I've bought since has been stuff that I've bought like packaging supplies and stuff. Mm. Right. So I've bought that, but I do need to because there is some other stuff I want to get. So I do need to make an, a separate account that isn't because, linked to my store. Yeah. So like, long story short, because Granny, um, you know, in the video, so I'm not giving too much away. She actually bought from a seller, left them a negative feedback, and guess what happened? Because she used her selling account, they've worked it out, they've done, they've returned the favor. So you know, you yeah. need to create a very clean skin buying account. And you know, if you buy packaging materials, go for it. Like you still need to create a buying account, uh, which you can. You can have multiple accounts. You know, I know people mm. with multiple stores. Um, yeah, they might have a public one that they use on eBay or on YouTube. Sorry. Um, then all they got four others that are incognito, so you can actually work out who it is. Um, but definitely, yeah, so definitely, definitely have a yeah, clean skin. They came and bought account. something from my store, and it was at a time where I was selling some lower value items that were free um, shipping, free post, and they were untracked. And that whole experience led to me never doing untracked selling right. again. Well, I do now. Yeah. I. I do have some untracked things now, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, you just need to know your market. And like I said, the distance yourself from bad transactions because, you know, like case in point, you know, that, that car part seller um, was just being vindictive. They're just being an idiot yeah. um, because, you know, basically, oh, well, you give me a negative feedback. Here's one for you. If you had a clean yeah. skin buying account, don't say, you know, like have the disgruntled octopus as my account, then not the disgruntled octopus as my buying account because <laughs> that might seem yes. a little bit too sus. But maybe it might be a case yeah. of saying disgruntled octopus and the secondary accounts like I love candy mm -hmm. or something along the lines of that. So, 
um, yeah, just be very mindful of you know what you're yeah what you're doing it from that perspective. But I want to roll back around to what we're talking about from you know resellers leaving full time income. Uh, sorry, full time reselling to <laughs> you know back to to full time employment. You know, obviously nine to five jobs. Yeah, we we did mention a lot of US sellers. Um, yeah, obviously Josh mm. Gold. Yeah, hustling hooks. Um, Archie Biscuit Button, all these different things. But it's also happened to us. I'm not going to mention their name because, you know, I haven't asked them particularly, but there are a couple of, you know, especially what I've seen as up-and-coming YouTubers. Mm. Um, you know, I have shouted them out a couple of times before. I did reach out to them because, you know, I haven't heard from them for a while. And, yeah, they did say that, hey, look, you know, this is a lot harder than we thought. We're going back to full-time employment. Um, so it does happen, you know, a lot more. We use some American, you know, examples. Um, I know at and, least and three we're only giving examples that we know of that have got a YouTube pres presence there and as you said earlier like there would be a lot of this going on with people that don't actually have a social media presence that were mm. resellers also yeah that we, mm. well, that we aren't aware and, of and that would be a lot more. I, yeah mm. and, and I, you can just see the start of the year right like yeah we yeah we have numerous people reach out to us um and you know talk to us and you know or react to our Instagram stories or our posts and all these different things, and they drop off the, over the course of the yeah. year, and you'll never see them again. Um, yeah, like there's a yeah a, a, a lady. <laughs> I'm gonna be very un undescriptive. Um, yeah, she <laughs> she mentioned to me like we used to talk probably a couple of times a week. Um, mm -hmm. Then she mentioned to me one day, oh, I'm not reselling anymore, and yeah, you know, I still talk to her, but yeah, you know, I, you know, I formed a friendship, and yeah, you know, and I do that from a perspective. Yeah, you know, if you're not in the reselling community, I'm not going to ostracize you. Like I'll still talk to you mm -hmm. if we've got a relationship. Yeah. You know, you know, probably we need that reselling element just to form that relationship. Like, just don't be some random person message me with no, nothing in common. But, yeah, yeah, we, we still talk to people from that perspective. So, yeah, like, like I said, don't think going back to full-time work is a bad thing. Uh, generate as much income as you want like, or as you can. Like, yeah, yeah, don't limit yourself to eBay because, you know, like we are saying, is that $50,000 a year mightn't be enough for, for you to live, you know, with mm. a family of four or five or six people in your, in your household, uh, where if you do nine to five and get, you know, maybe just say hundred thousand dollars, that might be you know pie in the sky kind of thing. But and you do eBay on top, and you get an extra thirty thousand dollars. You're working part time. That, that's helping the, the the household income. You know, like yeah. mm -hmm. you could do all these different things. And, and on the flip side as well is that you know, in my personal circumstances, I did say in the live, um, it was overshadowed by some other things going on. But <laughs> you know, Mrs. Octopus was the the sole. I suppose the sole full-time yeah. income earner, and that yeah, that caused a lot of problems from yeah, from our perspective because she was constantly burnt out. Yeah, she was doing all these different things. She was yeah, where I was yeah, reinvesting my business money back into the business to buy more stock to yeah, to obviously yeah, run a business like business should be ran. Um, yeah, the owners. Yeah, you weren't of, you, know, you weren't putting it back into your household, is what you're well, saying. Well, that's right. Yeah. So the, the onus of you know providing for the family was on her, and yeah, you know, now that lessens her you know her obligations, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, you know, and you know, we're happier, she's happier. You know, I've got the eBay stuff, which you know, like I said, I'm going to redirect into other event, um, other side projects mm -hmm. too as well, because you know, I, I suppose I want to be more transparent is if i can't be more transparent is that you know with <laughs> these different little shopify experiments and all these different things yeah. so um and yeah and like i said the, yes. my, what talking of which exciting news i've been approved as a new bookseller on amazon yay oh, look at this you guy. should teach really? me how to do that <laughs> yeah, that's right book, but just well, to look, once i actually course. Book, once i actually put a book up to list i will mm -hmm. But yeah, Good. I've been approved, but I just I haven't hmm. put a book book up yet. But anyway, yeah, anyway, I've been doing some for a while. <laughs> yeah, well, that wraps us up for another week. But I do want to know in the in the comment section below if you're a full time reseller or you're a part time reseller looking at going full time, um, put in the comment section what kind of job package would you have to be dangled dangled in front of your face to get back to full time employment. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so basically, if you're a full time reseller, like you know, like Oof. Brad Kane or Judder, for example, and someone rocked up to you and said, "Hey, look, here's a job for one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year," would you seriously consider it? I'll be quite curious to see what people's, you know, yeah, like what their the limitation, all those different things. And like I said, that you know, if you could do eBay part time, like I'm not saying like with Josh Goldick, for example, yeah, you have to cut all your social media ties and all these different things. But mm. how how big would that carrot need to be dangled in front of you before you actually? Yeah. Do that? So, I'm in and that I mean, everyone's, situation at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's circumstances are so different too. And, like, you know, it, you look at myself and I live in a small country town which inherently expenses are a lot less 
Um, mm. cost me a lot less, less to live. I live on my own, so there's only me to contend with. I don't have responsibilities of kids. I have my cat. That's I have to buy cat food. Um, mm. But, yeah, apart from that, I don't have any sort of responsibilities. So it costs me a lot less to live. So I can eBay and YouTube, because I'm officially a YouTuber now because I earn money off YouTube. Um, <laughs> that is giving me, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's providing you know, for me, and I've got a couple of other things. I said Amazon, and I've got mm. my little um thing, other thing that I'm going to be doing soon, which is mm. making books and uh, actually writing books, and also my book reading channel on YouTube, which you know I'll be cranking up a bit more. But yeah, be good. But mm. it's different because my circumstances are different. So yeah. well, that's right. And it, like, like I said, you, you don't have to put your circumstances in below. But I'd be quite curious to see what that that magic number is because I can guarantee you, if you won fifty million dollars in the lotto, you wouldn't be reselling. Yeah. <laughs> don't care what you say. Yes, I would. You, you would. You might enjoy it, but you wouldn't be. You know, you'd probably create your own <laughs> reselling platform. But yeah, I'd be quite curious. But yeah. um, by all means, we'll we'll see. Well, hopefully, let us know how you like the new format because obviously, like I said, we'll split the episodes into fifteen or twenty minute lots. Um, yeah, we're a bit clunky this week because I was trying to, yeah, be mindful of the fact that we've got those little allotments I've got to splice up. Um, Wendy did yeah. say to tell you that she will be watching it and in the new format and she will That's be good. letting us know what well, she thinks. Good. Yeah, because like I said, please let me know because like I said, Monday, Tuesday, sorry, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the, yeah, the little chunks will come out. Saturday at 8.08 a.m., um, the full episode will come out, so... Um, yeah, but like I said, let me know how you think. Uh, let me know what the magic number is, and by all means, we'll see you next time. And go and watch Blake on my channel as well. That's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, don't forget Blake. <laughs> it's <laughs> not all about you, Lockdo. Jeez. <laughs> 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 I'm going through a tunnel. I can't hear you. What'd you say? 